two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to History and Theories of Feminism and Gender and Development Studies. This is a Masters of Arts or Masters of Science program, but it could be used for master class. And this is the second lesson. So go on YouTube. If you've not watched the first one, go on YouTube or Facebook and catch up with the lesson one and then catch up with today's lesson as a continuation. And we want to do it as brief as under 30 minutes as much as possible. So let's get kicking. Um, what are you going to learn in these discussions? It's a discussion. So you make an input. I present, you make an input. And that's communicating, two-way communication. So we're going to be learning or learners are going to gain the knowledge of liberal feminism. That's a kind of feminism from the 30s into the 40s, 50s. Then what are the thematic areas? What are the precursors of the 1930s feminism? We need to have the historical antecedents in place to understand what was happening at the time and then project into the future. Then what is the understanding of feminism by Second World War in the 40s and the 50s, where in the 50s some newly independent countries started coming up? Then into the 70s, what are the acknowledgement of feminism? Feminism. Actually, we're talking about radical feminism here. Okay, into the 70s, what were the um, permutations? Women in workplace, women in entrepreneurial development, women in technological development. We'll look at all those aspects of it. And then the view of what? Why UN declared a women's decade? Okay, that on the side, we'll be looking at women and development as well as women in development. What are the inequalities when it comes to gender studies? Um, we'll also be appreciating social socialist feminism. That is where Marxism meets with radical feminism. All right. From there, we'll also be looking at some global recessions in the 1980s and then how it evolved feminism. We'll try to end up in the weakness of what the women, we'll end up with women in development. That's the weaknesses in women in development. All right. The name is H. Kwame Afaglu. All right. Let's look at the historical antecedents carefully. There must, it's possible that there was feminism movement before the 1930s. But let's speak if just from 1930s. In the 1930s, um, what was driving feminism at the time was what? That there was colonialism at the time. And those colonialists had a concept of what? Economics. And that economics drove their, uh, their colonial concepts. So because it was economics, it was being driven by colonialists in developing countries, they ignored or relegated issues of women to the background completely. But in, in around that same time, 1930s into the 40s, the concept was this, that what then is, the, what, what, what then were the economists thinking? They were thinking of modernization. And what, did, what does modernization mean? It means Western, democrat, Western technology, rather. It means Western technological institutions, setting up Western technological institutions, and then it's been driven by Western values, led by the US and Europe, where democracy was always a key driving point. All right, then if that be the case, then how, do, how did the liberal feminists enter. They said they should have women represented in various places. Don't forget, at the time, women were mostly in traditional roles, that is, taking care of the family in the house and taking care of the house. And the men go out to work and feed the family. So women were mostly dom domestic workers, unpaid domestic workers. But then as events went on into the 40s and 50s, war broke up. Second World War broke up by 1940, 42, 43, 44, 45, 44. All right. Um, so then a lot of the men were taken to the war field and leaving a lot of women at home who had to be working in the factories to keep the economy running and then to feed the soldiers on the battlefront. And so women got into workplaces. And that a lot of women got into workplaces, so they had to acknowledge them. You have no option but to acknowledge them. The interesting bit of it is, depending on who you're reading or which book you're reading, it was said that one major driving force at the time, though women were relegated to the background, they had already taken over the factories and all those places and working in various places. You couldn't have done nothing. So liberal feminism kicked in better 
They said, look, let there be women working because they are also human beings and they contribute to the labor force and that's economics and so it's fine. So it was accepted. Liberalism came in, liberal feminism came in and it was accepted nicely because there was no option. Okay, into the 40s and in the 50s, that the war was going on where liberal, the, the, uh, liberal feminism was at its best. They pushed the agenda that U.S. intellectual hegemony was always the key. However, however, there were two other issues. Once they claimed that, while some others, actors claim U.S. intellectual hegemony was the key, Japan was exporting technology to the U.S. Automobiles, Honda, motorbikes, fridges, televisions, automobile and vehicles were all going into America to compete. And that opened that market, the American market. Into the 70s, where into the 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that's where colonial powers had given independence or they had lost their authority over um, other states. Those states became independent and sovereign states on their own. So they were governing themselves. A lot of African states were governing themselves. Would they believe that now that they have political independence, they will gain hot economic hot prosperity? But then, did they factor in women? No. However, events do take place that there's nothing you could do. And um, one key event that took place was by the Nordic countries, international aid agencies that were coming to developing countries. Because after the Second World War, there was ravaging all over the place. So the Western powers or the colonialist uh, economies had broken down. They had broken down completely. It's been destroyed. So they had to come back and go to their colonial states to cash out from that place or to take the resources by and then pay them. All right. If that be the case, you could be thinking, you could be reasoning that, look, in the 70s, whilst uh, newly independent states were thinking of prosperity, the Western countries were thinking of how would women participate in the economic advancement and modernization. Still, it was still modernization. Modernization, like I said, was driven on Western technology and then Western values. Okay. So then women in development came up because Nordic countries, the Dutch, can, Dutch Netherlands and co had their international agencies that's coming to Africa and other developing parts of the world, like South America and then some parts of Asia. They made sure that women were part of the employment team. Women were part of the team. And these women grouped themselves into women in development. Then US also, USAID also picked up that same concept. And with their USAID, that women must be part of the USAID team that were going to that was going to other countries. And they had good representation in there. The women in development set up their DEXs. And of course, what did they do? They wrote policies, carried out research as to which roles women play in development, in what? Modernization development, in modernization. That was what it was about. That is what? Modernization was Western technological advancement and then Western values. So that was what they were doing. They had forgotten completely, that's WID, women in development. They had forgotten completely the needs of women. In lesson one, I told you that needs of women were what? Practical gender needs. And then the second one was what? Strategic gender needs. Practical gender needs are the daily needs of women for themselves and their children. Then strategic gender needs was what? How would they overcome the subordination? And those two were needs of women. However, women in development seem to have forgotten that. They just lost focus of it. Into the 70s and the 80s, Britain Wood Institution picked up that and then they decided to what? On the back of the UN declared decade, in 1975, in Mexico City, Britain Wood Institution, World Bank and Co. decided to carry out a structure adjustment program. In there, in that structure adjustment program, there were only two focus. One, to uh, reduce government expenditures of developing countries. Then two, for them to accept liberal concepts or to accept free market, uh, market economies. Okay. That being said and done, or consequentially, they had to insert the inclusion of women, inclusion of women and the vulnerable, women, children, aged and disabled, to follow up the UN, as a follow up to the UN decade, decade of women. Okay, so most countries had got a DEX or ministry or an office for women affairs. Most countries just picked it up that way because that's what UN had 
picked up you and have detected and then uh, Britain Wood Institution says if you want a loan you have to have that aspect of it women in development on decks and offices for them and so all that picked up and that also grew up into a stage that women entrepreneurs in development also picked up don't forget that their focus women in development's focus was what one modernization which is technology and western values western technology and western values so they wanted to make sure that all the women had acquired a certain high level of education and of course had acquired employment so they carry out data but they still have forgotten the needs of women all right that notwithstanding they followed up with women in technological development wtd wtd women in technological development women in entrepreneurship is women entrepreneur development so we had world bank for women women's bank all came up around that time women bank started picking up and then it picked up fell down if you keep following the historical antecedent you find out that the evolution was so clear that after structural adjustment program that had a mixed result it led to women in development also having a certain mixed result but they had done so much work they were so radical in itself so they had done so much research and put up so many policies that development of women had moved on and was on course okay that said and done we have to look at how did it evolve from structural adjustment program into the 80s by the 80s where it was known that structural adjustment was either a success or a failure there was one thing that came out very clear a lot of the feminist movements were dissatisfied with women in development and one that came up was socialist feminism after right after liberal feminism and radical feminism one that came up was socialist feminism and socialist feminism is a mix of what where marxism meets radical feminism so property owning in east africa a lot of the women couldn't have owned land in western africa when properties are shared when in the face of disease of the husband when properties are shared the spouses don't get the right to it and those were all issues that were of concern into the 80s and so they had to come up with more policies to change and so and um, in the midst of such socialist feminism it also changed so much it radically changed the focus so much but it didn't really solve the practical gender needs it sort of sorted out the strategic gender needs because sub subordination of women had then not been understood that it's not right there must be some equality and appreciation of both gender because even if you look at the population as of today 2023 that is 21st of october 2023 it's about one is to one that's the ratio of men and men and women or female and male in the world or male and female ratio it's about one is to one so then the role of subordination has to what be benign or has to be recessive rather it has to be recessive so that there's this equality and affirmative action takes place with that uh, weakness i can tell you that is how come uh, women in development became a bit um, recessive and in this recession gender and development picked up so that is the history around it um the name is Kwame Afaglo. Thank you.